Back on TYT Sports, some afternoon studio time, some clips for Tuesday as you were watching this. Francis, the Cleveland Browns are 0 and 12. And likely. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Edwin's not laughing. Yeah, Edwin's start start laughing. Off. Edwin's so happy because his Raiders are not 0 and 12. Uh, they're going into a bye week, so they get some time to. They get a victory for to that? really, <laughs> to really. How great would it be if the Browns went 0 15 and 1? Like they didn't get a victory, they got a tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the <laughs> consolation tie. Here's the. Let's go to their schedule. This is the last element I grabbed out of it. I don't have it written down. G14, which is their schedule. There is definitely two winnable games. Uh, at the Bills, that's a winnable game. Christmas Eve. And uh, Christmas Eve versus the Chargers. Yep. All morning games here in California, all uh, after the uh, 1 o'clock games in the schedule. I don't think they're going to get flexed into a Sunday night football position. I don't think no. they're going to say, you know what? Browns, 0-12, oh, let's make the Sunday night game Bengals versus Browns. Really set the ratings on fire. Uh, Francis. They can beat the Chargers. One, does this surprise you? Two, do you think the city of Cleveland doesn't even care that much because the Cabs won? They, I mean, they're just, they've had too much success. Ohio State's you can't give well. too much success to, a, to a, a city, you know what I mean? They've had the Cabs, the Indians came close, Ohio State are pretty good. I don't think you should get everything, you know what I mean? You, you can't win it all. And in the Browns' case, you can't win ever. <laughs> so here's what I find amazing is I was reading some reports, and they're just reports because the NFL mock drafts in general uh, are never correct until draft day. Mm -hmm. And there's really no consensus number one overall pick that started even in the beginning of the season, even though there's a lot of talented college players going to come out of this year. And one of the reports was they were looking at the U uh, UNC quarterback, and all I can think is... I could be wrong, but there's, if he goes to the Browns, there's a 0% chance he becomes a good quarterback. <laughs> if he goes in the third round to, let's say, the Cowboys of next year, so maybe like the Broncos, oh, he'll be a great quarterback. Yeah. But if, it's, it's, it's not that it's a curse. It's, it's a mentality. List, it's a mentality. And, and, and I look back and go, maybe you really just got to keep gutting the program. Maybe start building an offensive line so the quarterback that you have in place, even at a mediocre level, can at least move the football. You would think. There's some bright spots on the Browns. Somehow, they still find ways to have talented wide receivers. You know, before Josh Gordon's 15-time run-in with blunts in the NFL, he was lighting up his 12 games across the season. Now it's Terrell Pryor Sr., who I still think they should start at quarterback because that would make it more fun. Uh, and Terrell Pryor Sr., ahead of the game with the Giants, got into... Uh, I shouldn't even say Terrell Pryor. It was only Janoris Jenkins who sent out two really dumb, improperly worded, bad trash-talking tweets. And I can say it because I'm a Giants fan. So here's Janoris Jenkins' tweets that he sent about Terrell Pryor. And I just think it's funny because I love bad trash-talking probably more than I like good trash-talking. LOL, because he sucks. He's talking about Pryor. He caught balls end zone coverage. He ass shit eater to me. Right? Next tweet from Janoris Jenkins, Mr. Clamps. <laughs> Terrell Pryor, you a shit eater to me. You really sucks. Dot, dot, hashtag. <laughs> Terrell Pryor's response after the game? Always take the high road, kids. You're a great corner, solid defender. You played a solid game. God bless. Good luck, rest of you. I like Terrell Pryor. I like Terrell Pryor even more. Here's a guy who's optimistic on an 0-12 team, looking down the barrel of drafting maybe an Alabama defensive lineman to join next year. Get excited, maybe a pass rush. It's. What do you think about the Browns? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're, they're the most. They're, most they're, they're the most watchable, respond. unwatchable team I've ever witnessed. Like, here's the thing. I, I, I this sounds bad. I'd rather watch the Browns play a game than the Chargers play. A I'd game. rather watch the Browns than the Rams, which well, yeah, uh, this weekend was only a little bit more enjoyable because they got demolished. But. Take me back to what the nine seven game. What do you have ball? against the Rams, Jason? It was nine seven. I could score more than that. Two weeks ago, you're talking about right? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. That's the game I'm talking about. Yeah. It was it from their first from the, the, the LA Rams the first 12 game, game. <laughs> to that. It was like how far could this? How far more so down could this level of excitement go? And then they just completely outdone themselves. They gave me a nine seven game, and I was like, "Well, this is shite." And me, Jr. and I, and I sat here and we talked about it. Yeah. I was like, "This is just, it's not even that." Like their their, their offense, their offense, <laughs> their offense just wasn't 
so even the, the slightest bit enjoyable. Therefore, I was thinking to myself, I would rather watch a team get blown out, undoubtedly, at least try to put up some sort of a, uh, a charge like the Browns do, than watch this ever again. It was really hard to watch. And then the following week, it was somewhat better. And then this week, they got demolished by by the Saints, who were able to um, well, yeah, put on an offensive him. masterclass, which they well, they, was enjoyable. Uh, they actually trolled. Greg, Sean Payton trolled his ex-offensive coordinator. It was part of Bounty Gate. It was pretty great. Mm. Uh, so the Browns are the Browns. This really isn't necessarily news. There's a good chance they go 0-16. But if they salvage you know, a win or two, they're still likely coming away with the first overall pick again. Yeah. In the I, I think that the best chance definitely is against the Chargers. The Chargers, as much as they're not... Uh, a bad well, team by, yes. the, by the same standard as the Browns. They're a very unlucky team. What makes you say the Chargers are not by the same standards as the Browns? Is it because they have wins in their win column? Yeah, they have some wins. But <laughs> the Chargers find new ways to make their fans like detest them even more. By like Against the Dolphins, they had a very clear opportunity after the fumble was literally in front of their, 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 their fallen ago, end, yeah. end zone two, two weeks ago. And they had the greatest opportunity to go forward and, and salvage a win against an informed team. And they found new ways... To completely fuck up that plan. So uh, I feel like their unluckiness combined with the Browns' quest to get one win this season could provide a, a Christmas, an early Christmas present for the Cleveland fans. By the way, here's one team that the Browns would truck by a score of at least 70 or 80 points. That would be the Alabama Crimson Tide. And if you really believe, if you really believe the Alabama Crimson Tide could beat the Cleveland Browns, you don't watch any form of football or understand it at any level. At all. But Alabama are pretty good, though. Alabama's an unbelievable team. They look like they have a pro defense. Remember, out of the hundred percent, out of the out of the thousands of student athletes, sorry, out of the thousands of athlete students at colleges and universities around our country, they're not students. <laughs> the ones that get drafted, you're talking about two percent of all of those, right? So the highest level of player going to the NFL, which means the best, the best of the best, still make it to the Cleveland Browns. They would get. Alabama would get trucked. It's a, it's a speed. It's the speed of the game. Same just like how the Philadelphia 76ers would have always crushed the Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, uh, all right, what if, the Alabama, what if Alabama play against Cleveland Browns with Johnny Manziel at the helm for the Cleveland Browns? It would Do still, still Johnny, I still think Johnny Manziel would outplay Oh man, current Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel, no, Johnny, he's 108 pounds and in and out of different... Rehabs, no? <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right, well, inform somewhat. All right, well, not inform. Cleveland Browns draft pick Johnny Manziel at that point. Yeah, because he was one of the best quarterbacks in college football. So he's still better than what Alabama had at the point. Common ball. Maybe not A.J. McCarron. I don't know. This is getting out of control. It's not a matter of that. Money. It's the speed of the game. It's Danny the pass rush and defensive line. Comment below. Oh, it doesn't money. Johnny Manziel. Money. Money dance. Comment below. Money dance. I'd put, I'd put money. I'd put all my money. I don't money. think he'd win by 88. I I'd think put, he'd win I'd by put, like two or three touchdowns. I would put all my money on uh, Cleveland minus 50. I'm not even kidding. I think they'd win it's by like the two or three. It's the speed of the game. Two or three touchdowns. People, it's the speed of the game. But Alabama are two so good. Two touchdowns. Of course they are at the college level. Comment below, like, favorite, subscribe. At Francis underscore Maxwell underscore loves the Browns on Twitter. Underscore. Set the game. I want to watch it.